Dude, today I have once again Step Nerd and Doc and Foxy. Hello. How you guys doing? <laughs> and today we're going over the ad, the Bionic Man, the adaptation of Kevin Smith's never before made um, screenplay for a six million dollar man movie. And I can't <laughs> wait to see what he does with it, though. <laughs> now, do either of you know anything about the six million dollar man? I actually don't. Partially. This is a very yep, new you have, well, moment for me. I but, well, not a book or anything. I just know Best of Bad is Strong. The the older well, show. Yeah. Well, yeah. in the well, in the original show, you had um Lee, the actor Lee Majors playing Steve Austin. Not that Steve Austin. Not that Steve Austin. Uh, who got into an accident and well, as the frame goes, we can and uh, we can rebuild him. We can uh, we have the technology. Bigger, uh, stronger, faster. Yeah, bigger, faster, stronger. And, us, <laughs> and, and, I know. and all I that. I still remember the cutscene where he's just like, what, fully gold out? Or fully Something like yellow. that. Something and like, like that. looking all robotic like an animal or Going something. Going all fast right to see and, an and, and dealing with the, um, um, the, um, uh, the big, Bigfoot, which was a robot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, and, and then you always had the bionic woman. Yes, yeah. <laughs> See, I always forget about the bionic woman. I just like to use the two, because Dox's accident, I always like to say, we have, <laughs> we can rebuild him. We have <laughs> the technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, with a cover, it was covered by Alex Ross. Dynamite, because yeah, Dynamite had the license then. Now this goes, this has... The first 25 issues, we're not going over all the 25. We're just going over the ones that make up the um, adaptation. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, because there were issues in that, much like Green Hornet, they, um, they continue on past the adaptation. Oh, nice. Okay. See? Yep, right, yep, right here. It's just the first 10 issues. Then from 11 to 26, it's Phil Hester, who did the, script, uh, who did the translation of the script and layout for the issue. He took over main writing for for a while. Wow, I actually. Yep. Uh, awesome, oh, man. look at that cover! See, that's why oh the covers are so good, though. Well, like, again, it's Alex Ross. Again, amazing. it's Alex Ross. It's Alex Ross. It's, he's right. always doing incredible covers. Like the they, I can, of the engine up there is insane. Yep, I could just always tell someone name a bad Alex Ross cover. You can say probably a weaker cover compared to others, but never a bad one. Right. I would frame that. Right, though. I would tweak a couple of the colors in the background that lit up oh. offsets, but the depth in that engine yeah. makes it pop. It's beautiful. Yeah, but look, but look at this. It's all like, huh? Shink! Ugh. Oh, take, just takes the sandwich. That's and then... <laughs> Well, right. damn, he spun it's, it all the uh, way around. Yeah, exactly. How does that bar start? <laughs> <laughs> right, the shing Deadpool style. <laughs> yep. Eats the sandwich and I, I <laughs> <laughs> it's ready. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, oh! <laughs> oh, man. Destruction everywhere. And then takes whatever information's in there and then rips the arm apart. All right, that's a good start right there. Right. Oscar Go and Oscar Goldman, please. Yeah, tell him it's his goddamn secure and job security calling. Still no sign of him. Main Gate says he hasn't come through yet, sir. Whose idea was this flying money pit and pit at Hollenbeck? Not yours, sir. Sure as shit is not. It, it, it's not that soldier for two years now. Oh, I'm I'm babysitting Goldman's super check at behest of the president himself, mind you. And on launch day, he's a no-show. You know what's wrong with and with Operation Hallenbeck? Civilian, sir. Civilians, right as rain. Make up your mind, Hal. Hal, is she right as rain or and sure as shit? Look at and look at my watch, smartass. This crash should have been airborne 15 minutes ago. We're and relax, Generalissimo. Morning and morning and Captain Hall and Callaback, Mr. Goldman. Where is that little turd, Oscar? Was it you or the president who requested this turd? Wasn't well, me. Let's just leave it at that. Guy's a test pilot, not Elvis. It's funny because because the kids call him the Elvis of test pilots, and I and I and 
I know. I met Elvis Goldman. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. The Elvis of test pipes. I know. I met Elvis Goldman. Colonel Austin is no Elvis. If he's not here in 10 minutes, you're going up in his place. Hey, I said we should have made it a drone. Who puts pilots in planes anymore? It's still this man, uh, man's army, Goldman, meaning mankind. We, we want pilots in planes, and a drone ain't much more than, than a robot. You want a robot with uh, with a finger in the butt, butt, on the button or a human being? And there's no just no talking to him when he gets on his anti-robot soapbox, is there? Maybe your boy's scared, Goldman. Why is he my boy? I'm the pro-robot guy. Austin's your golden god. Good. He and he and he is uh, good. He is a god. He's not. People get scared, Oscar, especially over praised uh, over praised test pilots making their last run. Uh, who flew twelve tests and who flew tr- and, t- and twelve test runs in the new stealth fighter? Even when we were sure the retrocessors weren't up to snuff. Who landed the H class on fume when the fuel to weight ratio was miscalculated by your people? Who, when told to eject from a flaming F twenty two, still brought her in safely? Steve Austin may not be the most punctual person I've ever worked with, but I'd say he is, hands down, the bravest man alive, bar none. Steve yeah, Austin, you're the biggest so coward I've ever met. Now, this is actually um, the, um, it, the well, but it would be um, the bionic and uh, the bionic woman. Um, hold on, let me double check her name. Um, hold on a second, hold on a second. Oh, come on. Jamie Summers? Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. Yeah, Jamie. Jamie Summers. Uh, must you lock the door every time you go? It's not like I haven't seen... So, but yeah, here they're basically... He's setting them up that they, they're they pretty much engaged by this point. All right, you know, all right. They already know each other and everything. Okay. Get um, right to it. But yeah, anyway, it's not like it's not like I haven't seen it before. You don't need to be in on what goes and goes down here. And don't forget to wash your hands. Can you wait a few minutes till I open a window in here? One side, flyboy. Jesus, Steve, what died in here? It's, uh, it's big run today, and I got a little ner- I got a nervous stomach. You smell like my kids <laughs> after lunch on McRib Day because she's a teacher here. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's uh, terrible. Why don't you skip a why don't you skip a class and skip class today and watch me fly? Why don't you skip flying today and watch me teach? It's safer. Face down a, a class and load of fifth graders? I'll take my chances with the unproven aircraft. You better get used to the idea of kids, Colonel Austin. If you think I'm marrying you for the way you monopolize the bathroom, you're sadly mistaken. No, I think you're ma- I'm marrying me because my father is giving your father two fatted cows and three pelts. You're such a moron. Tell the moron that you love him. God help me. Tell him I love the moron. The moron loves you. That's a typical <laughs> Kevin writing, isn't it? That's yeah. like so super Hulk style writing right there. <laughs> One word, two word answers, like direct yeah. to the point. Like, and, 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 but, the, but at least he also knows when to rein in his dirty jokes uh, quite a bit. Right. He knows when to stop. Yep, exactly. Give me a lift because I like I, I like all the last minute fondling when you drop me off. You've had enough fondling this morning, Pokey Pokey. Let's go. Only you can get fired on your last day. All pilots never get fired. They just fly away and beg for free rides. Come on. <laughs> so, and so that's the other woman. And beautiful, isn't she? Although it's a woman I could never afford. You, on the other hand, are are cheap. I want you to promise me one thing. And one thing, you come back alive, JV. Promise? Okay, if I have to. The next time I get to come back dead, is, and but next time I get to come back dead, it's only fair. <laughs> <laughs> like there'll be a next time. You know yeah. how I, how much crap Oscar gave me about that? He said you were such a good influence. Oscar's a smart man. I should marry him. Oscar would never quit his job for you. Don't think I don't appreciate it. You owe me so much sex for this. A lifetime's worth. You're, dis- you're dismissed, Colonel Austin. See you tonight. <laughs> he's not even good enough to watch. And to watch. She's not. She's not even good enough to watch your last flight. That, my friend, is one stubborn woman. You're 45 minutes late. Really? Thought it was early. Like that's used work the first three times. 
matters little to me. McClintock, however, is ready to fire you. I'm glad you're here, Oscar. Give this whole career a sense of closure. Unfortunately, I can't stay. Why not? Uh, not. I do have a real job, you know, which is, well, I, oh my God, you almost tricked it out of me. Thank heavens I'm smart. It would be nice if one day I knew what branch you work for, at least. Austin, this is the last time. It is, sir. And that's what makes you being here so touching. I'm moved, sir. Deeply moved. Oh, I, <laughs> but hell, you've got this vein popping out right there. This is Goldman. Yes. What? I'm on my way. Please tell Colonel Austin I, I'll see him after his run. Civilians. Yes, sir. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? I, I'm all quiet on the southern and the southern front. It's customary to at least buy a fella dinner first. I find <laughs> I oh, find nothing no. wrong with you that a good swift kick in the ass wouldn't yeah. cure. Honestly, Rudy, I'd rather a kick than a probe any day. What were you looking for that deep? The Lost Ark? How often am I going to see you now that you're leaving the good life behind? Was that, was that fat retirement health plan the government's providing? Try once every 20 years. I'll miss you, Steve. It's always been a pleasure being your physician. Uh, this, hand, it is, was, this was the hand, wasn't it? There is, there is a new one in the sky, Austin. <laughs> now, I know you've all been debriefed, but, and, but to sum up today's exercise, we're going to demonstrate the validity of the, and Daedalus 5 for combat runs. The Daedalus is our newest stealth bomber, which will operate along with the same principle as the SR-2 at BL or the U-2. Colonel Austin will be taking her up to 80,000 feet at speeds of Mach 8. Once reached, Colonel Austin will shut down and glide for approximately six minutes, at which time he'll re-engage and bring her back for a fairly smooth landing. We hope. Oh, Mach 8 at 80,000? 80, I fail to see how that can be effective in combat. The Daedalus is intended for a long-range covert use. It can enter enemy atmosphere qu and quickly, quietly, without detection. Once it's shut down, it's virtually cloaked. By the time it ever might show up on radar, it'll have dumped whatever payload is carrying and be gone. And the reinforced undercarriage allows for it to land not only on airstrips, but on carriers as well. Honestly, gentlemen, the chances are we'll never have to use it. But I know I sleep better at night knowing this thing sitting in one of our hangars. Mission Control, this is Daedalus. Do you copy? We're getting it just fine, da and, da and we're getting it just fine, Daedalus. How are you feeling, Steve? Re ready for one last stab at glory, Colonel Austin? It's funny, Barnes. That's exactly what your wife always says when I stop by on those cold, lowly nights. You're, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I, I, you're busy playing glorified air traffic control. As long as, you, <laughs> as long as you make the bed before you go. Are we ready to, <laughs> to kickstart this jalopy? Okay, I do like how these guys are such good buddies that they could just make riffs like that. I right, love though. that. Like, that's God, a good is that the good retort? Is it? As long as you make the bed before you go. Right. <laughs> that is a good retort. Are we ready to kickstart this point. jalopy? You have clearance. Clear and Clarence say, and yeah, Clarence, Clarence, say hi to the angels for me. Grab your socks and hose and pull. <laughs> that was at Mach 1 and climbing, Steve. You can flap your wings anytime now. Roger that. What time okay. approximately? Meds, fi uh, meds figure around two. Project logs indicate they were working on the subfusion chip. Security cameras went down minutes before the force entry. I think it's the same MO as the two we had at Langley and NORAD. No guns. All edge weapon source, apparently. The night watchman, family man, and family man, divorce. Uh, and Betty sought divorce with the worst thing that ever was going to happen to him. What our boy take this time? All the cybernetic system files, as well as the subfusion chip they were working on. The prototype arm was destroyed. He's not nothing if not thorough. The old man been been by yet? Oh yeah, earlier. I think she's going to suggest an immediate start. Then I hope she's volunteering, uh, uh, because out of all the candidates they sent us, only one comes close, and he didn't have a shred of combat experience. The first guy had combat experience, and sure likes to remind us, doesn't he? And speaking of show offs, sounds like Colonel Austin just hit Mach seven. Colonel Austin's at Mach 7. Colonel Austin should be at Mach 8 in approximately 30 seconds, at which time he'll shut down, re-engage, and glide her in. Hot dab, he's at Mach 8. And Mach 8. Colonel Austin's at Mach 8, sir. It's got to be some kind of record. It's fifth, I believe. Colonel Austin has nothing if not an overachiever. Control, I'm shutting down now. All power switching to backup. Stand by. Top of the world, Ma. In five minutes, we re-engage engines. Colonel Cagney, the system checks your take. Meep, meep, meep. 
Holy shit. I'm back in control. I missed that last part. Steve, do not re-engage. Repeat, do not re-engage. I'm not scheduled to re-engage for another four minutes. Negative, Colonel. You have a massive fuel leak in your exhaust. It's spreading, Steve. Shut down your backups now. Control, I'm showing nothing up here. Are you positive? Colonel Austin, shut down your backups now. Oh, my God. Ah, shit. Control, I got flames here, and I'm losing altitude. Eject, Colonel Austin, now. Negative, Control. Eject is jam. He's not going to make it. He'll make it. There. Come on, come on. Sir, he's coming in too fast at, at this speed. Steve, pull up. Pull up, damn it. <coughs> uh, come on, Steve. You can do it. 20 seconds to impact. Uh, even it out, Steve. Even it out. I can't hold it. She's breaking up. She's breaking up. Wow. Now, how was that for the first issue? That's intense. <laughs> It I love starts it. Starts good, it ends good. Let's go. The, the jokes artwork, are great. <laughs> right, though. I love this 80s style artwork, too. Right. All uh, the lasers in the background. Uh, yep. She's and breaking. Oh, well, that was, well, that was the main cover you saw earlier. Right. It's like, like she's breaking going on. Mach yeah. 8 right now, time, trying to time travel or some shit. Yep. <laughs> she's breaking up. Dear right. God. <laughs> Four hits in four months. All the bionic division of OSI. All resulting in stepped up high, of highly de- and classified data. All resulting in gruesome casualties. We made this bed when we made that monster. Now we got to make another one. You bring a knife, and by knife, you bring a gun. This isn't a gun. This isn't a gun, Oscar. You're talking about making another human bomb. One that's bigger, stronger, and faster. Great. Jeez. What do we do when that one turns on us, too? I see what you're saying, Andrew. You know what else I see? Buckets of blood on my hand. He's a butcher. Margaret, are there other means of shutting down Hall? I sent SEAL Team 4 after him. We think he ate them. SEAL Team 5 did a little better. I know this because I watched the helmet cam from the uh, from the war room. I also watched the presence throw up when we saw Hall rip their limbs off and force feed train killers their arms. That's when the screaming didn't even sound human. If Hall can make small work of the most lethal killing force America's ever trained, twice even, possibly eating half of them, how the hell can we protect the president? How the hell can we protect anybody? All right. Will you be seeing over, overseeing volunteer section, selection, ma'am? I'll leave that to Oscar. Or, that was someone like Trump. <laughs> I know, right? I'm begging your pardon, ma'am, yeah. but it was Mr. Goldman's last selection that put us in this position. No, in position. no offense, Oscar. I don't lay blame at OSI, Langston. Oscar's no more responsible for what happened was Hall than I am. Ma- uh, ma'am, Hall was Mr. Goldman's recommendation. The prototype selection and training were completely overseen by him and his team. It's difficult to avoid finding some fault in his project management. I guess you didn't hear me the first time, Dylan, when I politely told you to shut the fuck up. Now everyone out, except <laughs> Oscar. My hero. God, I hate the overtalkers. It's difficult to find and uh, to avoid finding some fault. Punk's trying to say, you senior citizens are too old for wet works anymore. I'm promoting him to the Rhode Island an office. We have a Rhode I- Island office. We do now. He's it. That's all farts got to stick together, Oscar. In regard to candidate selection, I have to tell you that we don't have a volunteer who'd even come close to spec. For long use in the field would result in another breakdown, physical or psychological. Not this time. Limited usage is our objective. Shutdown and fail states will be built in. Once we clean up the whole mess, we can mothball our new model until further necessity. Margaret, we're talking about a man here. We're talking about a machine, Oscar. And when not in use, machines get turned off. Goldman, Steve! Why the hell is he still in there? Get him out of there! We're trying, Oscar! The metal is so high-tech and tech-heavy duty, we snapped a jaw of life trying to breach the cockpit. What happened? Mission Control Barta, we're in! Oh, my God, I think he's alive! Wow, right. that's insane. Our, our, automate, um, our, our automation initiative has taken another leap. Our output has tripled and the need for human workers has decreased by another 18%. We've, and we've laid off 2,000 more employees in our six plants. We take great pride in relating this, in, relate, relating this information. Now it looks like Nixon almost. Of course, sir. <laughs> that puts our revenue higher than it had ever been since prehistoric. There's nothing to celebrate in depriving a worker of its livelihood. You do well to remember that. And what's and what's of our competitor and competitors in the state? Have they not made similar advancements? They outsource all their tech. These days, movies are the only real American export 
or movies about science fiction. Here, we turn their science fiction into fact. And the new chip technology I procured in three months will be able to go, go completely automated. And while there may be no honor in eliminating workers, there is tremendous profit. Where did, procure, where did you procure this miracle chip? We've got a man working on our behalf, more or less. He's taught me so much about automated technology. I pray, nephew, that you didn't and do not place too much faith in machines. Never, uncle. Uh, like, damage report. So, so yeah, he is. Ugh, crap. Cooked. Wow. Again, and clear. <laughs> it sucks so bad. Yep, come on, Rudy. Subject's pulse is erratic. This isn't a subject, Carl. That's one, and one, and this one more. And one, this one's more personal. We're going to save a friend. Come. Oh, he bought, he's bought, basically, Kevin Smith is clearly referencing Kingpin, you know, his training. Right. But this guy is right. much more extreme. Yeah, I like the artwork. It's like oh. almost like commando style mixed with that 80s and 90s style. Up oh, lights. Subtle, Mr. Hall. English, Mr. Verdesky. I speak English in the United States. Excuse <laughs> me. I believe these are yours. What in- English it is. Uh, I trust <laughs> I tr- I trust your uh, and your uh, latest mission went smoothly. Uh, oh, oh, I think I got another reply to make. Hold on. Go right at buddy. Anyway, um, missions go to Mars. This was a raid. Human beings, the waste, and you waste the gift of imagination dreaming about money. This briefcase holds $25 million. $25 million you asked for. Everyone dreams of money, Mr. Hall. Money is power. Mine is a siren whose song's best ignored. Just ask them. I love that. <laughs> that is what, what are they doing? Recruiting. Nothing is wasted here. All right. This is what you came for. What about the subfusion tech? Doesn't exist. Your leads were wrong. Leave the briefcase and get out. You uh, you order me in and out of this fortress of yours as if I didn't pay for it. Uh, people that people that stick around here wind up dead or in fruit. If you're willing to volunteer for either, I'd be glad to have you. I've included an additional million dollars in the briefcase. It's for my uncle. I'd like him killed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I just had to say, it. like, why did that middle panel? Can you go back to that real quick? Look at the middle panel. Oh, sh- yep. Why does oh. that look like a? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> and then immediately after, if you look at his pecs and that tube. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But anyway, I'll, I'll do your uncle Verdonsky for free of charge. One less of your kind means one more of us. Oh, yeah, he's turned Steve? to everybody. Yep, Steve, welcome back. I made it. You did. Wish I could save the same for the D- and Daedalus. Tell, tell them, take it out of my pension. I'm sure they'll appreciate the offer. How long? Four weeks, Steve. It was touch and go there for a while, but Dr. Wells says you're going to be fine now. You're out of the woods. Two days ahead of schedule. I told you this boy was strong. Hello, stranger. Aren't you glad you got that chuck up before that takeoff? Has he spoken? He's cracked a bad joke. Does that count? Cracked bad jokes and cracked ribs? Uh, yes, I'd say Colonel Austin is back to where? Where's my arm? Steve, you've had a bad crash. Oh, you lost your right arm and both your legs. But you're alive, Steve. You're going to live. No. Did you hear Dr. Wells, Steve? You're going to live. Why? Why didn't you let me die? Oh, no. Right? Warrior's death or mechanical everything. Yeah. Well, he doesn't know about the mechanical stuff yet. Not yet. He can't see that far yet. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this, this is good writing. It is really good writing. Yeah. Uh, Major, I have an intruder in section in section six. So basically we're getting another, you know, him plowing through and everything. Right. Damn. I don't need to I don't need to read all of that, of course. <laughs> no. You're doing very good with the reading also though. <laughs> But yeah, we're on, evacuate the payload. Evacuate the payload to the secondary site. Scuttle if necessary. Sc- 
Shadalek, no one was, no, our nation ever developed this weapon. Its very existence is an act of war. Now go! So, yep, yeah, no, and he's not moving. No, wait, he's, oh! You're next, Goldman. You and that evil bitch. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is awesome, isn't it? That is insane. Yes. I love the artwork. Wow, that no, I, I don't I don't th- I don't think I asked for your permission, Oscar. I don't care. I won't let you do this. From his personnel file to refresh your memory, Colonel Austin has been in combat twice, Afghanistan and Iraq. He's flown countless in test flights and covert missions, and his health is impeccable. Was impeccable. That man is broken now. We can rebuild him. For what? So you can send him on your dirty little errands? He just woken up to a lifetime of misery. And I'm not going to let you play Frankenstein with what's left of his dignity. Hey, he's, co- he's come too, has he? That's a shame. I was hoping to bypass certain situations. He has a fiancé. Yeah. He had a fiancé. As of 1100 this morning, Colonel Austin is being reclassified as deceased. He's dead, at least to the world. He undergoes surgery next week. That is, if he complies, which I can't see why he wouldn't. What other choice does he have? He has the right to a normal life. Please, that man's a mess. What semblance of a normal life can he ha- possibly have the right to? Damn it, Margaret, he's my friend. All the more reason why you should support the procedure. We'll make him whole again, Oscar. That much, I promise. You'll make him a machine, nothing more. I won't sit back and, wa- and watch what happened to Hall happen to Steve. Then get it right this time, Mr. Goldman. And the first step towards that mutually beneficial goal is convincing him that this is exactly what he needs. You have one week. I suggest you get to work. Ugh. Bitch! <laughs> right. That goes way beyond anything. She- and at the, same, at the same time, she's not 100% <laughs> wrong. Right, but she's still trying to do it like while he's unconscious so he can't consent. She well, can't. Yeah. Like, it's insane. Mm. Sweet Jesus, help him get, get me in back on the bed. Turn the machines off, Wells. Shut them down, God damn it! I don't want this. Let me die, damn it. I'm not a man. Nurse, give me a sedative. What are you trying what are you trying to do? Shut these down? They're not keeping you alive, Steve. You're not even on life support anymore. Why'd you let them pull me out of the wreck? You sick bastard! Hold him down, damn it. So in other words, he is not on life support. He is technically perfectly fine, except for his limbs. Oh right. God. Like his chest and his head are all good right now. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else is gone. <laughs> he wants to die, which is unusual for a patient his condition, but I'd hope for better from him and from him. He may not be have a strong will to live right now, but deep down the fighter's still there. He might be the strongest man I know. How strong would you say he could and live a long life? I say he could live a long life. Actually, I say he has a better chance of that now. He was a test pilot, Oscar. No matter how good you are, eventually your luck runs out. Oh, well, now he isn't rolling the dice anymore. Rudy, do you have any expertise with prosthetics? Of course. You're talking to an ex-combat surgeon. Why do you ask? Are you familiar with the term bionics? You mean outside of comic books? They're a reality. I'm talking about lifelike artificial limbs, legs, arms, and organs, hearts, eyes, eyes, and Oscar. I'm a doctor. I'm up to every advanced medical science ma- makes in a field, and I've never heard I'm talking about military science. Classified military science. Your OSI? Level 12. Listen, Rudy, OSI has been on this for years. Deci- decades. We, and we could build a fully functional human being if we choose. One so real, it shock you. Uh, we could build, and we could build your wife, and you never know the difference. Physically, at least. But there's no brain program. Uh, and programming machine was truly human behavior. Humans are just too erratic to be fake. But we can repair the physical. Bones, tissue, skin. More real than real. Right down the amount of hairs on a knuckle. You're talking about cyborgs. It's all it all works, and it's so advanced it could change the way you view medical forever. Then why the hell is it in use? If what you're saying is true, we could make cripples walk and in, in the blind see. Eliminate dialysis. Two words: weapon division. Figures something that would could go do our world a great service, and they've already corrupted it. Put your delicate political sensibilities aside for a minute. I'm talking about Steve here. You mean? The work's completely over, uh, overhauled. By who say so, Oscar? That's classified. But does it matter? Does to me. I'm the boy physician, Oscar. I'm not going to give him hope for a new life, only to have it scra- and scrapped over some black ops turf war. You're his physician, yes. But he's my friend. Well, in, Steve's, in, Austin, in Steve Austin, you have a prime candidate for partial rehabilitation, rehabilitation with the technology you're talking about. Partial? You said he was strong. He is. 
but he sustained severe spinal damage. His hips are a mess. Even if he kept his legs, I doubt they'd be of much use. I can com- I can guarantee complete recovery with four times the strength, perhaps more. How? What are these things made of? How are they powered? Oh, Rudy, you have to, and we have to cut you off on 50 years' worth of research by tomorrow morning. And it's all up to up and up and up, Steve. I've gone over everything myself, and the project will be fully funded for five years to the tune of how much, Oscar? And Oscar, that's tough to quantify, Rudy. Uh, um, equipment, support personnel, patient and patent fees. I'd say about six million dollars a day. Steve, you'll walk again. You'll run even faster than you ever could before. Faster than anyone on the planet. Make you whole again. It'll be as if the crash never happened. Who told Jamie? I did. At night. What did you tell her? Everything. But that doesn't matter. But that doesn't matter. Now you can be with her again, as normal as you ever were. I had a mole, uh, Rudy, on my right side, right under my butt. Jam- Jamie's always said it looked like Africa because of the way it was shaped. He called yeah, me yeah. Buana sometimes, just to be cute. Buana beast. I've spent weeks lying here thinking about how she'll never say that again because there's no mole, because there's no legs. And I saw- and thought about how I won't hear her and, and hear humor in her voice anymore. Only pity. The first pity for her broken fiancé, less than half the man he used to be. And, it would, it, and then it would change to pity for herself. Pity for a woman shackled to a hunk of meat that shared some memories of a man named Steve Austin. And now you say that it's, and that's over? Now you tell me I could be whole and return to her like nothing ever happened? And based on what you'll show me? Yeah, well, you can even probably probably even replace the mole? Put Africa back on my ass. Make me Buana Beast again. Uh, 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 Steve, don't. I'll walk, you say. I'll run. I've seen prosthetics on other ex-pilots, Oscar. And you think because of the condition I'm in, I'll agree to everything, to anything that could possibly give me some goddamn sliver of humanity back? I died on the Daedalus, and no promise of a fake body is going to bring me back from the grave. I'm a dead man already. This is my grave. Do you hear me? I'm dead. <laughs> why don't you respect me? really memory? wanted to die in that crash. Yep. So why don't you respect the memory of a dead man? Get the hell out of here. Steve, get out! Good evening, Colonel Austin. Sorry to bug you again, but I have to take your blood pressure. This is going to sound extremely corny, but I feel like I know you. I don't mean that in a have we met somewhere before kind of way. It's just that my brother always talks about you. He was a pilot, Air Force, real young. Whenever he came over and home over holidays, he'd blab about how great the service was and what he's been doing. You know how gung-ho kids are when they first enlist, I'd imagine. This is one of those gung-ho, and I was one of those gung-ho kids once. Why am I not surprised? Anyway, Brad, my brother, he'd always talk about this. Colonel Steve Austin, war hero, astronaut, test pilot. He practically wanted to be you. Anytime you broke a record, I heard about it. When they told me you crashed, my heart sank. For you, of course, but also for Brad and how, and how he'd have taken it. He could probably go AWOL to come see you to make sure you are okay. Tell him not to waste his time. He's dead. Crash like yours, only not in some super secret jet. Just a normal F-16, landing on the deck of a carrier. Cable snapped and he rolled. I'm sorry. It was years ago. He lost both of his legs in the crash and was in a coma. He never came out of it. Just look at this mess. My family kept saying that it was probably better that he died, you know? Rather than have to live like that the rest of his life, People tell themselves some stupid things to get over pain, I guess. Maybe it wasn't so stupid. It was to me. It used to make me so angry. I mean, so, and he wouldn't walk anymore. That's sad, I know. But Brad was funny. Just a really funny guy. And you don't need legs to tell a joke. You know, there's not a day goes by that I don't think about how great it would have been to hear him tell me that record, that what record Steve Austin broke today. I miss him. And I'm glad you got to, and I got to meet you finally. I mean, it was, it was under more pleasant circumstances, but still, I'm glad. I'm really glad you made it, Colonel Austin. Okay, I like that. All right, the writing is <laughs> Again, so good. That right is, yeah, this is some of Kevin's best. All right, I like that it was a lot. definitely like beautiful scene right there. I like everything about it so far. <laughs> what, the, what the hell are you doing? Think you're doing with this dog? This is a hospital. This, this dog is here on my authority, nurse. I don't care if the dog whisperer said he could come. Get it out of here now. The animal's an important part of an extremely depressed patient therapy. So how's about giving us a break? If he craps, you're picking it up. I wouldn't dream of it, ma'am. I'll, I myself will pick it up. 
And who the hell are you? I'm the man with the German Shepherd. Hey, boy, who let you in here? This was me. Ma Max is a, a big a big puppy, ain't you, boy? What am I, five years old? You think bringing me a puppy will make everything okay? He's a little big to be a, I call it a puppy, Steve. Steve, Max is a very extraordinary animal. He's specially trained in narcotics tech and detection and disaster rescue. And now he's what, my new pal? And what's so extraordinary about a drug dog? What's he going to do for me? Roll over? Bag? Don't bet your slippers. Oh, smile, damn it. That was funny. Take your dog and get out of here. Max worked Border Patrol in San Diego. One day, a van lord of drug runners gets and gets popped at the border, thanks to Max here. Weeks later, one of them is so pissed off and pissed at Max, he sneaks back to the dog pen at the station and takes him to pieces with a crowbar. Shattered all four legs, fractured his skull, broke most of his ribs, snapped his spine, just mutilated him. Police finally got to the guy before he could kill him. The cops did a number on him, so I hear, Good! Wow. Yeah, they better have just destroyed that, man. Yeah! And look at him! Oh, look at him. How could you hate something like a face like that? How could you do that to that animal? Right, so, how, so how come he... You're kidding. You're saying the dog's artificial? Not artificial. Cybernetic. Bionic, Steve. Cybernetic. And very, very normal. Ha! <laughs> And very normal. <laughs> how, long, how long will it take? The, the procedure will t last 42 hours. Recovery time is hard to pinpoint because the level of replacement we'll be doing has never been done before. Where? Here? Our facility in Colorado is state of the art. If the state of the art, a fantastic view of the Rockies. Come on. The moment it doesn't feel right, I'm out. You understand? And I start to feel like a guinea pig, then we'll take you off the hamster reel. <laughs> Gentlemen. Mr. Car Mr. and Miss Car and Carlise, if I may have your attention, what you're about to witness is nothing short of a miracle of modern science. Colonel Steve Austin, a man barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We're going to recreate <laughs> yeah, the world's technology. first. Yes, well, we're going to create the world's first fully functional bionic man. Steve Austin will be that man. We'll make him better than he was before. Better, faster, and stronger. Faster. The first step towards this is reinforced Colonel Austin's skeletal structure, particularly the spine. While the alloys that make up the bionic limbs are light and built to withstand torque of many tons, attaching these to the existing human frame would result in structural failure of the skeleton the moment, and the moment low capacity exceeds normal human limits. Dr. Kill Killian's team has developed a polymer that allows steel reinforcement to be liquefied and ejected in the, in the Colonel Austin's bones. It'll effectively replace marrow with metal, allowing the alloy to reinforce the skeleton to withstand the weight and pressure Colonel Austin's new muscles will exert. So in other words, they're enhancing his spine, but not replacing his spine. Hmm. And making him like Wolverine with the adamantium. No, no, no. That covered it over it. This is just reinforcing it. Blood cells will, right. Blood, blood cells will now be manufactured outside of the bone by components Dr. Killing teams have updated since the prototype procedure. A governing system backup, backup will regulate usage and wattage of the mini nuclear generator, a feature that failed in the prototype. As per Miss and Carly's directives, a failed device, safe device has been implemented. Uh, the onboard computer has three terabytes of memory, all allowing optimum information processing and storage. From an access point behind Colonel Austin's right ear, data may be entered and downloaded at extremely high speeds, even remotely. Due to the weight displacement ratios, the existing arm will be removed to compensate for the replacement arm. So in other words, they're removing all, all the all limbs because, let's be honest, it would be complete. Because originally it was just like, he had one strong arm, both legs, and then eyes. Like, no, no, it's all replaced. Right, he's got like half of one bicep that's his, and then the rest is just metal. Oh, but no, that was the original. This one, it's all replaced. Yeah, you need to get it all off of there. Get rid yep, of all like, that. Yeah, hmm. like I said, for uh, yeah, weight displacement. Each arm is fitted with... In other words, he's bringing some realism to the science that was just ignored. Yeah, definitely. Each arm is fitted with its own power source. Dr. Killian's team has designed and manufactured multiple miniature nuclear generators that act as power cells for the lift, allowing them to manipulate weights up to one time. Simulated nerve endings receive and process stimulus by sending electrical impulses first to the generator, then to the brain. While Colonel Austin's brain will control the limbs as if they were his own, they draw the strength from the generators without sending pain or fatigue signals back. This will relieve Colonel Austin of the normal fatigue one would feel after extremely strenuous activity. Each leg can withstand impacts of up to five tons, allowing for landings that would, normal, would shatter normal legs. 
Also equipped with the micro miniaturized nuclear generators, the legs will function at 10 times the speed of an average athlete. As with the arm removal of the existing healthy eye, uh, 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 as with the arm removal of the existing healthy eye, is essential for optimum biocular performances. When we're required, the bionic eyes will capture and crystallize images up to one mile in distance with full photo and video capture. Maximum range is approximately three miles with built-in tracking and targeting system that allow for pinpoint accuracy. The maxillofacial muscle layer in Colonel Austin's face will now be completely malleable using encoded data structures of over 300 facial types and time-released uh, skin toners. The vintage modification enhancers will allow Colonel Austin to change the shape and color of his face at will. Identity can be altered to resemble a wide variety of types and ethnicities. The new epidermis can withstand pressure of 400 pounds without and puncture, flame resistant 200 degrees, and easily replaceable. Uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you build a bionic man. <laughs> that is just so much. The science actually sounds like it's on point, <laughs> you know? I mean, probably it's still a lot of bullshit, but still. Right. Sounds better. <laughs> it sounds like something that we still can't do, but we might be able to pull up. <laughs> right. But, uh, Tink, haven't, uh, haven't you had enough bad luck lately? They're going to have to learn to be more careful with things. They took my arm, my good arm. They had to, to compensate for the robotics, bionics. Is there any of me left? This is you. There's nothing to indicate I lived through that crash. No one would ever know. Not, not, some of us will never forget. I wanted those scars. It's a reminder of who I was, what I survived. I'll never have scars again. I mean, I'm without blemish. Perfect. Well, perfect people don't bitch this much. I just wish they, I just wish they had left something of me behind. Why don't you try, and try going on safari, Buana? Son of a! <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> When perfect people don't bitch this much. So I can hear you, hear you loud and clear. Steve, we're going to be testing your speed today. The course is laid out with markers along the trail. We'll be able to monitor your heart rate and velocity with the devices you're wearing. We've got video monitors, trail cams, as well as your onboard. As you, uh, your onboard. So we'll never lose sight of you. Just relax and take it easy at first. When you feel comfortable, pick up the pace. But don't overdo it. It's just the trial run. Heart rate normal. He's doing fine. Speed five miles an hour. What's... In, What's that noise? The no, 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 like a spring or something. Probably feedback pulses from many new generators. Even shielded, the radiation can interfere with its onboard phone. Ah, Robert Dini! No, 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 no. <laughs> yes. His onboard phone, his eyes are freaking computers and webcams and <laughs> can store <What>? video. <laughs> He's past the first marker. How's he doing? Everything's normal. He's up to 10 miles an hour. Olympic marathon pace. But his heart rate hasn't jumped at all. Inter interesting. He's taken a 13 and foot and, and uh, he's taken a 13 foot 30 degree incline without raising his blood pressure. 10 minutes in and he'll, he's up to 15 miles an hour. 30 miles. Uh, that monitor okay? 45 miles per hour. Is that is that possible? Uh, yeah. We were expecting 25, 30 tops. His heart rate hasn't jumped. That's because he's expending very little energy. The bionics are doing the work. He's, his cardiovascular isn't being tapped. As far as his body is concerned, he's doing nothing more than nothing more strenuous than walking. <laughs> Better. He'll go fast. Stronger. Faster. That's like his mantra, too. <laughs> uh -uh. How do you feel, Colonel Austin? Sore. Rudy and Killian should be brought before the, the hob or torch would be like this. Well, give a scientist a new toy. Steve. I can't tell you how glad I am. I know, and I thank you. What you've done for me is nothing short of amazing, but I'd like to know why. You always were a perceptive guy. Steve, I, uh, I, I hope, uh, it is our hope that you'll come to work for us and us at OSI. Your, your OSI? I'm sure you've heard many rumors about what exactly we do at OSI. Some of them are probably true. Well, most of them are probably true. This is what created us. After the Kennedy assassination, we were set up to police and oversee our government's own various covert agencies. And for years, we did just that. Sometimes we were effective. Sometimes we weren't. We found ourselves to be the most efficient in world politics. Rather, uh, 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 rather areas of world politics where the CIA and NSA couldn't even make moves without creating international incidents. 
making sure men like these came to quick ends. We've never been detected and never dropped the ball. And kind of stuff and kind of stuff you're dealing in. I should hope not. I'm not going to lie to you. It's pretty coke and dagger stuff. Spying in this day and age, it's called uh, we call it preemptive defense, diffusing potential problems before they just and they become just that. You think I fit the profile? Well, let's just say I'm glad someone with your capabilities is on our side. Is there some sort of secret handshake that's supposed to teach me here? So you're in? Just like that? Any question? Only one question. What's the mission, sir? He is ready to go. That yep. was work. Go back to that one. Uh, well, oh, this one? Oh, oh that looks gosh. amazing. That split face. Oh, my God. Yeah, this artwork is phenomenal. That is really sick. Mm-hmm. And there's an international robotics conference in Washington, D.C. this weekend. The chairman of Levinov, and, and Le, Le, yeah, Net Levinov of Tech, Gendy Lenov, will be delivering the keynote address. He's the man we're in, investigating. You'll be posing as Uri and Kamara, an, an executive with Lenov Tech. You'll have access to every aspect of Lenov's dealings. Once inside, the objective is to investigate Lenov himself. Download his file, talk to his people. If possible, interrogate him. But at no point is he to be made, made aware of your agenda. Keep it all friendly. So yeah, he's basically going in for you know, as a spy. All right. Excuse me, Miss. But can I get you, my friend over there? I'm playing a joke at him. I know there's a little out there, but there's a hundred bucks in it for you. What do you want me to do? Well, I was thinking. Hi, Uri. Yes, you, handsome. I'm sorry if we met. No, but you're. And but we're going to. If you like, room 1145. Now, all good? And all good? Perfect. Think he'll fall for it? Totally. He's going to be knocked out when he finds me instead of you in that room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello? Hi, Yuri. You sound different. Bad cold. I need someone to nurse me back to help. Well, my dear, I'm no doctor, but... Uh -huh. Sorry, buddy. I know this wasn't the date you had in mind. At least I hope it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never face. know. I need to borrow your face for a while. Don't worry. I have no intention of keeping it. Let's see if the OSI Lon Cheney app makes me red. What the hell? <laughs> Austin. Oh, yeah. I got to stick at the tape. Right. No, he has no intention of keeping it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, no, but look at it. Look at that. What the hell? Right. <laughs> like, uh, duh. <laughs> That's crazy. That's how he sees the face. <laughs> I, uh, wow, a bionic face. Yeah, da, uh, and Uri, Mr. Levinov, and Uri, Mr. Levinov wants to speak to you before his speech. We're in his suite. I'll be right there. What room is that again? I don't trust my nephew any longer. There are things he's involved with. I don't know quite how to say it. Uh, I fear for my life, Uri. What is it, and what is it that leads you to this belief? I suspect he made, he's made alliances with a very dangerous. They've started, Mr. Le, uh, Leonov. Uh, uh, Mr. Leonov is on in five minutes. They'll have to wait. Mr. Leonov needs some. This old fool, and this old fool is just prowling on Kam Kamarov. Pay no heed. Besides, I have Oleg to watch over me. Isn't that right, Oleg? May I use the bathroom, Mr. Le Leonov? I'll be down shortly. Of course, Gary. Although I suspect this is your way of avoiding my opening joke. <laughs> Breaker 199, this is Tin Man. You got your ears on solid gold? This is Big 10-4, and, and that's a Big 10-4, Tin Man. Have you been to see the wizard? Affirmative solid gold. How's your Russia holding up? Keep it simple, and I'm ice cream. Have to say, though, Le uh, Leonov doesn't seem the cloak and dagger type. Another thing, he's scared out of his mind. Of what? Uh, who mentioned a, 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 who mentioned a nephew who's apparently not here? Radonsky. He's our next line of investigation. But for now, you stick to the old man. You ready to upload? That's a go. Solid gold. We are broadcasting live. So, yep, he goes on up there. But, then, uh, yeah, he does his joke like, please forgive my English. I learned all my English from Boris and Natasha and Bart Walkie and Bullwinkle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Austin out of the burner, heading for what I'm sure will be a skittling lecture. And just decrypting the data you sent. Perfect. Your satellite uplink is functioning at an optimum. So is my and so is my bladder. I'm gonna hit the bathroom, so I might be losing you folks for a bit. Colonel Austin, this is in Clarice. We'd like to continue monitoring from operations, just as a precaution. Stay online. 
Well, folks, you see, I'm pretty big on bathroom privacy. Should be in my personnel file. Wait a minute. Karamov, do, and do, and, and do shots with us. Uh, New York, New York, it's a hell uh, uh, but I know, any suge- uh, anyone we know? Oh, my God. Steve, Steve, report. If you people have any sort of backup, I suggest calling it now. Something weird is going on down, down here. That corp was Lenoff's bodyguard. But I saw him alive and kicking just a second ago. Looks like I'm not the only one playing dress up tonight. It is this human. Uh oh, and we know who it is. <laughs> and oh, oh. Ricky O style. Uh, here's a gut full of irony, courtesy of an Iron Man. Holy shit. I saw this other room full of and gearhead. And and don't you want to take a closer look at the he- at the hardware? And step aside, move. Steve, what are you doing? Do not approach the subject. Repeat, do not approach the subject, Colonel Austin. He's not ready for it for this. Not him. Let's find out. Colonel Austin, apprehend the suspect immediately. That's an order. You can an order me not to, lady. Like, mm. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, he's putting it work. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, my turn. No, it's my turn. <laughs> uh, you're not one of Lenov's people. Neither are you. Your Russian is worse than mine. Oh, I got a whole lot of things worse than you. Now get the picture. Who the hell is this guy? Get out of there, Steve! You mean no one told you? <laughs> well, look at you. The Bionic Man 2.0. Uh, Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, yep. All right, come on. Now, you didn't think you were the first toys off the assembly line, did you? Nope. <laughs> He's on the ground. On the ground, or well. Oh, yeah, he tried to get him in the balls. Oh, no. Didn't work. Dirty pool, man. Dirty pool. <laughs> All right. Open fire already. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, what was going on there? Who the hell is this guy? This was not in the training montage. Ha! <laughs> We're gonna need a montage. 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 <laughs> Even Rocky had a montage. Montage. I love it. Yes. <laughs> but uh, uh you, you guys all right? We'll be okay. But what the hell is that thing? Not your problem. Freeze! Put your hands in the air. Hey, wait a minute, guys. I, hey, wait a minute. I'm not the guy. Fire! <laughs> Holy shit! Come on! Come on! Ah, uh, no, no. Oh, ah. Yeah. We're reading some in- in slight internal injuries, but his processes are in- intact and functioning at peak. This is out of hand. He exposed himself and jeopardized the program. It may call for a fail safe. Are you out of your mind? He's fighting for his life, Margaret, and you put him in that position. Just give him a few more minutes. Oh. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Get back. Get. Oh, dear. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, come on! Oh, he stopped it! Oh, wow. Hold on to the mama, baby. Hi. Hi, and hello. Thank God. Bring him in, one way or another. I, I don't know how you did that, but thank you, sir. Thank you so so much. Thank you so... Oh, my God! What are you? Oh, wow, wow. It's, whoa, whoa, it's okay. Ah, it's the Terminator, Bobby! What? <laughs> what are you looking at? What the hell are you looking at? Is that real? Yeah, like some other movie. Goddamn superhero. Uh, shouldn't we, you know, stop him? Yeah, sure. What took you so damn long? I ran into a friend. And my uncle? Dead. Good. Like you. Oh! oh double cross. The double crosser. <laughs> throw, him on, throw him on the tarmac. I don't want any of his parts. Uh, and run right over him! Damn. Doesn't want any of his parts. That's <laughs> oh, nice. God. That's really oh, nice. God. Jamie. He went home to Jamie. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, look at that. Isn't that awesome? Wow. That is insanely good right there. That's, it's, yeah, uh, I love that. Look at that. It's all one color, basically, but with all these different shades that define it. That's so cool. Right. Yeah, but it's also, but I'm also talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. 
the whole scene. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like the, the whole thing. Yeah. Oh wow, that's cool too. I do like how they're doing like scenes in a person. Right. Yeah. That's like a thing it's in the extreme. in the pictures. Yeah. Yep. Am I dead? Holy shit! I buried you. I know, Gina. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> For the last eight yeah. months, I've done nothing but work, run errands, do chores, anything that would exhaust me enough to keep from thinking I painted the, uh, thinking. I painted that damn house twice, so I didn't have to remember that you that you burned up. I know, baby. I know, but get the hell away from me. I know this is all a shock. Shock? My deaf fiance shows up in my driveway at one in the morning, and he calls it a shock? Uh, 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 yeah, and uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, what about that? What are you doing out at one in the morning anyway? Don't you have school tomorrow? I was grocery shopping at one in the morning. Store's less crowded then. I don't have to worry about running into my students' parents. Never mind that. What are you doing out at one in the morning? I was waiting until you were gone so I could use the bathroom. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Running jokes. <You're> right. <laughs> I love that. Right? I waited to use the bathroom. Right. he's being polite yeah. <laughs> the whole time I was coming here I, it just kept running through my mind what if I catch her in bed with some guy or some girl for that matter what if and what if so, and if someone goes through a traumatic event it, and it could even what if someone goes through a traumatic event it can confuse their identity shut up I can't believe that son of a bitch Oscar sat right here and lied to me I hate him forever now wasn't his fault I didn't want you to know either. Then I'll hate you forever too. So that uh, so you got banged up in the crash. Big deal. I should have been there for your surgery, your rehab. I should have been told the truth. The truth would have been, well, it would have been hard to take. What are you talking about? You chip a tooth or something? You don't even have any scars. You keep talking about the crash like you really got destroyed, but you look great. Great. Jamie, I was destroyed in the crash. Uh, apparently the only thing destroyed in the this. I know yeah. right right apparently the only thing destroyed in that crash was your libido eight months of not seeing me and you haven't tried to get in my pants yet or is that what was destroyed drop them Austin <laughs> Jamie wait ow hey I'm sorry it's just there's something I haven't told you about the crash well I've been trying but it's why I haven't come to see you the reason I they told you I died huh I lost every, almost everything every limb in the crash Broke my back, lost an eye. They replaced everything with robotic parts. They're called bionic. Even my skin is synthetic. But Africa is still, it's still where it is. It's synthetic, Jamie. They faked it. Africa. I should probably go. <clears throat> my father had a pacemaker put in his heart when he was 55. For years, I wouldn't let my mother touch him because he didn't really... Uh, and He wouldn't let my mother touch him because he didn't feel like a real man anymore. Then he died. I remember at the funeral, my mom went up to the casket and just touched him. Touched his face, oh. stroked his hair. Kind of grossed me out. So I asked her why she did it. You know what she told me? She told me she hated him because he let something as stupid as pride get between them. And because of that, she never got to touch him again until he died. Oh, you're, a, terrible. you're a man, Steve. You're, you're a man, Steve Austin. You're the same man you've always been, regardless of that bionic stuff. You know how I know that? Because you held me tonight the same way you always held me. And I felt your love for me. And I felt how much I loved you. I didn't think I'd ever feel that again. I don't care how they did it. I'm just glad you're alive. I'm sorry. You should you should be. Because your stupid pride robbed me of eight months of my life. If you ever do that again, it'll take more than metal to hold your ass together after I'm done with it. Uh -oh. <laughs> they you really gotta... love each other. <laughs> You have to get out of here. Take some sick leave from work and stay with your aunt for a while. But lay low. Do you understand? Why? Just promise me. I'll be back as soon as everything's cleared up. I swear. You have to go, Steve. I I, I love you. Look, I'm sorry, Jamie, but whoosh, you earned that one. What the hell was that all about? You sent me into the middle of a war zone, for Christ's sake. Steve, calm down. We didn't. Calm down. Oscar, I watched a man get torn apart. And by who? Who the hell was that guy? Not her agent? Farmer agent. I want answers, damn it. They better start coming fast or I'm walking. Who was that guy? <laughs> Colonel Avery Hall. I heard, I heard of that guy, but and they were only stories, rumors. And, and Avery Hall is all too real. Even though he's 10 years younger, he's already a legend when I was already a legend when I started OSI. He was a real life G.I. Joe. Smart, strong, relentless, but humane. A tactical and improvisational genius. 
DOD wanted to put him out on active duty and use him as a recruiting tool full time. The guy was a true believer, totally dedicated to fighting for his country. He came to OSI because we could challenge him. Imagine that. A soldier looking for challenges simple and simple run-of-the-mill warfare couldn't provide. He was as good as advertised. He accomplished missions, very hairy missions, mind you, that would have broken even our most elite special forces. Avery Hall is who sells Team 6 at is and who SEAL Team 6 has on their lunch boxes. Doesn't sound <laughs> like the guy I met and I met. Hang with me. In the days before the official start of Operation Iraq Freedom, the Brits lost an SAS recon team deep in the desert. Hall was our choice, the leader rescue team. The Republican Guard had them prisoner in what the UN believed to be a hospital, off limits to combat ops. Our strike had to be surgical. Everything went according to plan until Hall went off script. The British commanders were evacuated safely, but Hall encountered a group of Iraqi dissidents who were being tortured in the facility. Like I said, Kid was a true believer. He ordered his backup helicopter to rendezvous point to pick up his new cargo. But that was all the time the Republican Guard needed. Just as the second chapter arrived, Hall and the prisoners were ambushed. It was a bloodbath. Hall took 26 rounds all over his body, but managed to roll into an irrigation ditch and crawl almost a mile away from, from the hospital. His crew, disobeying orders by returning, managed to find him by his emergency beacon. He was a man barely alive. Two weeks prior, our bionic division had a breakthrough in the servo miniaturization field, one that allowed for nuclear engines the artificial lift. All we needed was a candidate, one which to test the procedure. The decision was an easy one. I'm not the first. I, it was reckless, I know. We rebuilt him, but most of the design had only been Siri at that point. We should have tested it further, but Hall was as good as dead if we did it. At least attempt the procedure. After a surprising short recovery period, Hall wanted to go back into the field. He was eager to test his new abilities. The team thought he was ready. Physically, of course, he was in better shape than before the procedure. He'd been on a total of 32 missions in various parts of the globe, and he never once mentioned the malfunctions. The containment units that we used for Hall's nuclear processor were made of what later would found out to be an inferior alloy, not used to, uh, to the rigors of combat. It began to leak, and what's more, the leak began to spread. Here, the nuclear waste was carried through its system directly to his brain. The volume of the waste generated by the bionics, though toxic, is minimal, but compound over time, it began to take its toll on Colonel Hall's perception. And this is what you stuck in my body? This poison is going to eat my mind? We've since been able to perfect the containment and runoff elements and, and runoff elements in you. And twice monthly, your system will be flush of any contaminants that the processors generate, like dialysis. So Hall went renegade because he never got the treatment. Essentially, it began simple. His message became questionable. His behavior erratic. Oh, jeez! A nursery! A nursery. Uh -huh. See that at the bottom? Oh my god. Uh, That's we, we sent him into the Brazilian rainforest on what we assumed would be a harmless deforestation fact gathering mission. The orders were observed and collect data only. That was the last contact we had with him as our agent. He suffered a complete back breakdown due to the contamination. Shortly oh, after the that, incident, that. we sent a team into the jungle to bring Hull down. He took them out in seconds, like he knew. But what that? What are you saying? Oh no, he definitely loved that jungle setting. He wanted to yep. relax. <laughs> yep. Up. Um, he took them in, like he knew they were coming. After that, we lost track of him completely. He vanished. Right. Until a few months ago, the first in a series of break-ins occurred our Silicon Valley Bionic Division. Followed by subsequent great break-ins at other OSI headquarters, the latest of which being in Washington. High tech um, casualties at each. Uh, high casualties at each. Go on. He's making his way through. Yep. Hey, he's at, and what's he after? Technology. He's stolen a data on every area of bionics we've been developing. I suspect he knew we would eventually create another bionic agent and wish to keep up with the competition, as it were. So who is he working for now? Our sources told us that L Lenoff Tech has been developing highly advanced robotic technology, technologies that operate at the same principle as the bionic and the data that's been stolen. Combining mass production with bionic technology, well, you can see why that may worry us. Hence our investigation into Lenoff. But now that Lenoff is dead at Hall's hands, no, and no less, we're at a bit of a loss. We think there's more to it than that. Are you familiar with electro electromagnetic pulse technology? I'm a test pilot. Of course I am. 
then you know what kind of havoc a massive EMP detonation could wreck on the nation's infrastructure. Strategically placed EMPs or EMPs either way, they could shut down computers, cars, banks, planes, anything relying on electronic systems. Uh, our sources indicate a single man overran a lo and looted a secret North Korean facility dedicated to the mass development the development of mass of a massive EMP device. He killed over 20 highly trained soldiers, wounded 30 and 30 more. And like anyone we know, he could just be he could just be acquiring the technology to protect himself from a similar attack. An EMP would be de would devastate a cyborg's onboard system, or he could be planning something more forward thinking. What does that have to do with me? Due to the obvious diplomatic issues with the Russian government, we can't charge Lenov Tech with employing a renegade superhuman agent that we're responsible for developing. We have leads on where he might be, but we need you to find him. And once I have, liquidate, liquidate him. So this is why you rebuilt. To become your replacement wind-up assassin? What the hell makes you people think I'm even capable of killing Hall? I'm a goddamn pilot. I'd hardly call it killing, Colonel Austin. You're merely be shutting down the device that's been malfunctioning. And a machine to kill a machine. Well, this robot has no interest in killing your old robot. Count me out of OSI. I'm afraid it's not as simple as that, Colonel Austin. Mr. Goldman informed Colonel Austin of the conditions of his refurbishment. God damn you, Mar Margaret. Tell him. Officially, you don't exist anymore, Steve. You were listed as deceived after your crash. Won't the world be surprised to see that's not the case? There's more. You took certain steps after Hall's meltdown. You've been playing with a failsafe device. If for any reason you and you deviate from your particular mission, the generator that power you, uh, you can be deactivated by Mrs. Car and Carlitz. No. Ah! I, I I know you can still hear me, Colonel Austin. So let me explain this to you. Explain it to you like this: I will lock you in that steel cage till the toxic runoff eats your brain. You I will leave you inert and still alert. Everything you do, and you will, unless you do everything this bureau tells you to do. Bitch. I love the blues, uh, man. All the blues just catch me off guard. Yep. <laughs> uh, they can shut me down. Did you know that, Rudy? They push a button and I just tap out. Talk about a turn off. A turn off. I'm a tool. No, Steve. <laughs> they're the tools. Oscar, Rudy, how's the patient? You don't see a patient. You see a machine. A machine you and your boss can unplug whenever uh, you want. <laughs> unplug and scrap. You'd have to go through me first. Oh, it's obvious how much of a fight you put up there. Steve, everything I did, the compromise that I made, it was all to save your life. Why bother, Oscar? This isn't living. You were lying there like a slab of meat, and they told me they could rebuild you, save your life, so I made the call. I made the call that brought my best friend back from the dead. Nobody stole your goddamn humanity, Steve. It's still there. You keep rationalizing it, Oscar. I'm sure you'll learn to live with yourself. Steve, wait. Come on, Steve. Colonel Austin. Let's keep it professional from here on out. Fine. We've got a probable location on Hall's base of operation, deep in the rural range. range. It's suspected to be a bomb-hardened uh, hardened facility in the core of a mountain. A, spe a spe specially outfitted stealth bomber will drop you in the target zone and pick you up on your and pick up on your signal. Infiltrate with extreme prejudice and put Hall down by any means necessary. Recover or destroy the stolen OSI bionics and EMP tech. If we don't hear from you in 18 hours. Well, hone in on your tracking beacon and send in the cavalry. But sending me alone keeps things quiet. Covers your ad. The Russians would be, wouldn't be keen on a full-scale military operation within their borders, Steve. The favor that I had to call in for this insertion alone burned a lifetime of political capital. Brave of you. Steve, there's one more thing. The fail-safe device that you're carrying will be activated if I deviate from my mission. I know. Listen, it's located in your right arm, right here. If you If activated... You feel a dulling tingle, something like your arm falling asleep. It spreads from the processor to, from process to process until your entire system shuts down. The process takes up to two minutes to complete. Fantastic. You have two minutes from the moment you feel that sensation in your arm. Do you understand? Two minutes, Steve. I understand. <laughs> so, yeah, it gets dropped off. Uh, didn't I tell you, Naga? What say we test our guests' our guest newly minted abilities? Stingers, please. Well, he's not shy. Woof! Stop! Ah, and Colonel Austin, this is Avery Hall, the man you've been sent to kill. To meet me in battle at the heart of this mountain fortress, you need only steps to the tunnel. I await your, you with great eagerness. Ah, you're not Hall. 
not as strong, and darn sure not as smart. They're going to have to do better than that, Hall. You hear me? You're going to have to do a hell of a lot better than that. Ah! Tell me, Colonel Austin, did they let you keep your balls? <laughs> Relax. I don't want to see them or anything. I'm just curious. They didn't let me keep mine. Ah! Makes you feel human again, doesn't it? I built this cell, this cell to withstand the upper limits of my own strength. Long and short of it is that you can't get out of that until I let you out. I knew one day our mutual masters would attempt to recreate the process that made me the man I am today, but that's neither here nor there. For now, let's use your unfortunate incarceration to get acquainted. I think we both know each other. Ah, jeez. I hate it when this... When, ah, there we go. Hold on. Yes, I'm sure Car and Carly's and her pet goldfish told you all about me. I've done my research on you, Colonel Austin, the second greatest miracle of modern science. You're surely being the first, of course. Of course, look, and, and, of course. Look, and look, you know what has to happen here. They've stuffed me full of tracking devices. They can see everything I see, hear everything I hear. Here, oh, yeah. I, I, I hear. They'll be coming to blast it like the hell if they're not already on their way. Either give yourself up or beat it. I'm not interested in conversation. That doesn't sound like the gung ho American spirit they're famous at OSI. And they're famous for at OSI. Has, has someone lost the face? Someone doesn't give a damn anymore. They've taken everything from me. I'm sure they'll have no qualms about destroying me right alongside you. You hear that, Carlise? Go ahead and blow us up, folks, right here, uh, right here, right now. Bravo. But you're talking to yourself, Colonel. I had your communication capabilities removed while you were out. <laughs> Oh, you're still fu fully functional, but you can't communicate with them, and they can't see or hear through you. Not anymore. By the way, did you know they could turn that on and off without your knowledge? They could go online with you anytime they like. Say, while you were mid-coitus, th and that you're, you're, you'd are you be courting Miss Somers, the office watching your bedroom antics like so, so, so much amateur porn, oh, yeah. beats YouTube all to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the mention ooh, the mention of Miss Summers. It's in your personnel file. The one that's all too easy to hack into at OSI. See and Carly, it seems Carly's now regards Jamie as a potential danger too and to the Bionic Project. She's even tossing on the idea of having her liquidated. They have big plans for you, Colonel. You're the perfect weapon. And unlike myself, you left ties behind. Ties that your human side might find difficult to cut. Well, Margaret Carlis is perfectly willing to cut them for you. Yeah. Uh, 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 nice try. Right. You know I'm telling the truth. They learned when they lost control of me that failsafe they've installed in you is a direct result. Besides, I wouldn't lie to my only brother. Stop deluding yourself. I was built to take you down. Right, well, there is that. But regardless, we are brothers of sorts. We have the same parents. Do you know who and who those parents are? Better yet, do you know who your father is? Adolf Hitler is your father, Colonel. What the hell? Ha, where do you think the bionics program began? <laughs> you heard of the experiments the Nazi do doctor performed? A an atrocious act of inhumane pr uh, pr uh, proportions. Well, sort of, a primitive sort of bionics was among those experiments on our brave allied POWs. And just as the space program was born out of the genius of those scientists, Something else was sifted out of the ashes of World War II. Tink, tink. You probably like that, don't you? Critting a lunatic like Hitler for your existence. <laughs> I found his brand of hate limited. It was. It, it would be ridiculous for us to view one race as beneath us when they're all beneath yeah. us. So that's what you're working towards. You're going to wipe out mankind and fashion a machine world. Didn't I see that in a movie one? Yeah. Famous Austin Witt. But Witt is usually preceded by intelligence, and that's where they slipped up. Because that very intelligence is going to help you see the world through my eyes. You're smart, Colonel Austin, so I won't waste any more of your time. I'm in constructing you, OSI has jump-started my plan for worldwide domination. I mean, what kind of villain would I be if I lacked one of those, right? You're not a villain. You're a joke. I'm a god! Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, as, as you are, as are you, we are the Adam of e and the Eve of a new epoch. You can be with it whichever one you like. We are thinking machines. And it's machines with free will. Not that soft-headed Hollywood artificial intelligence garbage. <laughs> the perfect union mankind has been working towards since the Industrial Revolution began. The marriage of man and machine. Jesus, you're insane. No, 
I'm upgraded. Ah! <laughs> I'm not anti-human, Colonel. Hell, I used to be one myself. But I view them as they view the apes from which they evolved. A cute but clear reminder of the nece necessity of natural selection. I'm a, uh, am I a machine who dreamed he was a man or a man who dreamed he was a machine? I'm getting sentimental, aren't I? I apologize. My humanity is showing again. We need the humans in order to take them for, uh, over in our image. Ugh, ugh. My voltage affected on both nervous systems <laughs> and bionic circuitry. I use it to discipline my troops when necessary. An army, as you know, thrives on discipline. This army took me a mere six months to build, thanks largely to the data Ozai supplied me via my little raids. And it's only the beginning, Colonel. I'm going to decrease the population of the world by two thirds and convert the remaining fortunate few to cyborgs. Think of it the dregs of this planet wiped clean, taking the disease and pollution with them, leaving a world where morality is conquered by science. Earth will be ruled by the product of self directed evolution, regenesis by my hand, a race of the bionic, ageless, desolate. Perfect like us. I would like very much for you to rule by my side, Colonel. We were the first to be reborn into this new world. It's only fitting that we oversee it together. Like it or not, we are brothers in steel. Hmm. Is not how, how, I know. He's just cuckoo. Right. He said <laughs> you're going to you kill. How do I propose to kill two thirds? Uh, use this two thirds? Why plan to use the EMP device? I, I so wisely liberate from the North Koreans. I'm sure once I thought I procured them simply as a defensive measure, that I feared an EMP pulse may disrupt my electric systems. Once again, as I have with their bionics, I have improved on their technology. Refined it. No, I cowboy the EMP emitters to send a pulse that disrupts organic electrical system, brainwaves, synaptic relays, heartbeats. Of course, it isn't instantaneous. The pulse also watches over the targeted victims in waves slowly arraying their bodily functions until they simply shut down. <laughs> Gruesome, but to be, to be sure, but leaving minimal damage to the physical kingdom I stand to inherit. I shall begin in Washington, D.C., a deceptive and de uh, decapitation strike. All right, the country will fall into anarchy. I'll commandeer America's nuclear capability. We'll outlive whatever radioactive fallout that may exist from nuking the rest of the world. Sure, the semi-organic skin they covered ours in will blister and rot, but as I, you probably know, already noticed, beauty is only skin deep, right? <laughs> you know what he might be of? The villain from uh, Max Steel. All right. Mm -hmm. It's like at first it's Kano and then the Terminator yep. and then Max <laughs> So what do you say, see? Have I sufficiently appealed to your intellect? This is the, this very day and this very day the new world begins. And I and have to, and have you by my side for its birth. Arts, are you with me? Go to hell! Well, it was worth a shot, wasn't it? This fortress will go nuclear in 20 minutes, by which time my army and I, along with EMP devices, will be long on our way towards the U.S. Only one megaton, but it'll be enough to destroy this base. And you with it. Dramatic, I know. But as you pointed out, I've watched too many movies. And that's it. And, and das Vidanya. And das Vidanya, Colonel Austin. I shall think of you from time to time. Should I run into Carlise or Oscar? I'll tell and tell them what you and that you died with your boots on. And this, this is for not declining politely. We're almost done. Two more issues. Show me the the, the video feed. Let's see how Owa's ice tin soldier is faring. Ah! Still ticking. I'm so sorry, Jamie. Your stamina is commendable, Colonel. But it's all for nothing. In minutes, this mountain will be a smoking crater. You'll be dead, and your country will belong to me. Jamie! Though I must admit, it gives me some pleasure to see you flopping around like a fish out of water. Urgh! I guess you'll st you're still good for something after all, Colonel. You you will amuse me until we are out of broadcast range. <laughs> ah! well, I'll be damned. Did you just rip your finger off? Ah, ting! The source falls. Sadly, you're still trapped in a cage that was built to withstand even my strength. Haven't you been a pay, uh, paying attention? But I am not you! <laughs> Congratulations, Colonel Austin. But where yours truly has failed to end your misbegotten existence, let Robert Oppenheimer stand, stand fit. No amount of bionics will allow you to survive an atomic detonation at ground zero. Oh, um, um a full-blown nuke, huh? 
and me uh, and me without a lead line refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that was obviously added after the fact. <laughs> if this was written in '98. Uh, the color shift is yeah. really sick, though. Like uh, ninety miles per hour. <laughs> Boom! Oh, no, no. Ah, oh, hell. I'll make sure to come back for your body, kid. And if there's anyone left to come back for, Echo One to Echo Base. You copy? Echo One to Echo Base. You copy? Uh, just hold together a few hours, baby. A few hours more. Dr. Carlis, Mr. Goldman, SATCOM's tracking an unidentified transport coming into our airspace pretty friggin' fast. Uh, not on any logs or manifests. It could be Steve. It could also be his predecessor. Notify all intelligent branches and military. We're at code 11. Once the parcels drop, we'll land on the other side of the mall and let our troops and troops mop up the survivors. Bombs away, as they say. Uh, you yeah. see that? Must be a ceremonial flyover or something. Oh! Those panels are amazing, though. The way they did the artwork inside of those panels above her. That was yeah. Uh, what, what is this? What the hell is this? Dispatch, dispatch says we got thousands dead on, at the, on the mall. It's a coordinated attack. We need tactical backup now. Everything you got, Pennsylvania on sex. And excellent. Make sure the other two transports put down and put down at their at their landing point before air defense finally shows up. Naga, if you would. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, send a platoon to secure the device. Have them calibrate the pulse to an expanding in way that will take down any incoming pilot. I've got some old friends I, ha I have to pay my respect to, Naga. You and I have a house call to make. And it's like something out of a goddamn movie. And, uh, don't, and don't, these monsters have already torn through three battalions. And the president, people aboard Air Force One. This is your tin soldier, isn't it, Margaret? Blame game in, uh, in later, Roger. This nation's under attack. Uh, uh, what about the pulse device? Activated 10 minutes ago, directly above the reflecting pool. Estimated 30,000 dead already. A, um... Jesus wept. What are we up against here? All is uh, apparently calibrated the a device to disrupt organic system, leaving artificial systems intact. People die, but machines continue to function. We'll feel limited effects here. Trouble concentrating, dizziness, nosebleed. But should and but should and should he move it closer to the capital? We've already got an armed cavalry unit on the way to intercept. These vehicles are hard against EMP attacks. Never tested against anything like this, though, General. Who knows what Hall's done with this technology? Relax, Mr. Goodman. We've and we you just sit back and watch the army clean up your mess. We have vigil on the device, Colonel. We beat the robot to the target. Recover and or destroy. We're not taking any chances, soldier. Light it light it up. What the? They're all over us! They're all You were saying, General? Uh, even without the pulse device, this bionic army could would overwhelm the capital in minutes. Can't we drop a bomb on these bastards? Scorched shirts? This is the capital of the United States you're talking about. Then what the, what the hell are we supposed to do? What do we have left? We evacuate. You sick son of a bitch. You really did it. No time to evacuate now, General. You're already here. You treacherous bastard! Oh, I like the General! Margaret, Margaret, Margaret. How long has it been? Hull, isn't that just like you, Margaret? In control till the last. I regret to reform you, inform you that how uh, that how uh, you, however, that the situation is under control for some time. I'm, uh, as I'm sure you've seen, my Main Street Electric Operator is wiping out the inhabitants of your fair city. Those that survived the initial EMP attack, that is. What? What, what do you mean mean to do with us? It was you? Nothing. I figured this is as good a place as any to wait for your government's unconditional surrender. After all, in just 20 short minutes, I've wiped out half the population of Washington and now hold the heads of the entire defense infrastructure hostage. With, mind you, a device that would kill everyone in a, a mile-wide radius instantly. This seat, and this seat taken. Where's Colonel Austin? Dead by now. I don't know about you, but all this mayhem and death takes a bit, a bit out of me. Good thing we're almost done here. Enjoy the beginning of the end of your species, Margaret. Extinction is imminent. Is imminent. That's it, you bastard. Stay in formation. What the hell is this? Boom! Austin, enjoy the beginning of the end of your species, Hall. Extinction is evident. Oh, kill, kill the hell out of Colonel Austin. Nothing leaves, and, no, and leave nothing for us to rebuild. Damn it. <laughs> What's this now? Is that Austin's teacher girlfriend? 
Oh, Margaret, hmm. you just couldn't help yourself, could you? You had to go and snatch Austin's best gal to serve as the ultimate bargaining chip against him. Smart move, really. Only now that chip will belong to me. Let's pay her a visit. Hey, robot rangers! There, open fire! Oscar, no! Steve, do you read me? Steve! If right, I'm busy right now. Hall's using an organic EMP device. You gotta shut it down before it kills us all! Ugh. But, uh, but Steve, the EMP is specifically calibrated to shut down organic system, even though it's shielded by bionic bodies. So how am I going to get near it? The CPU will restart your brain each time the pulse shuts it down. I mean, how bad is it going to hurt? It'll feel like a defibrillator to the brain. Shit. <laughs> He's down, but the other cyborgs are still moving. Paul replaced their brains with bionics. He's controlling an robot, a, 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 a robot man. There's only one man out there now. Gah! Ah, damn! Everybody, he shut it down. Send the troops in to secure the city. You killed my friend. You leveled my army. You broke my toy. Uh, now, uh, now, don't give out on me yet. I have something to show you. See, I believe in an eye for an eye, which means you kill one of mine, I kill one of yours. I bet Oz I didn't give you this kind of hardware. Gun hand, bitch. I could perforate that woman a thousand times with bionically guided tracking bullets before you ever, you ever get a hand on me. Don't do this. Don't sweat it. Your buddy Oscar will just pump her full of bionics too, and put her and the works and the, for the for OSI. It's over, all right. I'm sorry, OSI stole your dick, but enough already. Okay, Carl Austin. Now you're just begging for an ass kicking. Team, he's got a gun in. Why'd he even bother with a fist fight? Woman and, and woman. Austin ins insulted his manhood. Good. And Hall will kill him. Not if we kill him first. Austin, shut Austin down now. Kill you. I'll kill you. That's it, boy. Show them and what they and what just what they built. But you'll need to do a bit more, kid. Show them what a threat you represent. Show them that technology unleashed. Shut him down. Are you safe? He just saved the city. Maybe the world. Yes, but he's no match for Hall's strength or ruthlessness. If we shut him down now, we can let the army take down Hall and limit the damage to Austin. How's this? Steve, I thought you lost it when you had Jamie arrested, but that's beyond. And this is beyond even that. A man is fighting for his life out there. That's the problem, Oscar. Austin lost control of his emotions, causing serious damage to our investment in the process. You'll kill him. He can be reprogrammed. Stop right now, or so help me all. Guard, Mr. Goldman, I don't want to. It's all right, son. You're just obeying orders. We're all just obeying orders here. Director Car and, Car and Carly's initiating remote shutdown of Project Six Million. Authorization, Sunshine 12, break 12, 9. Shut up and, and shut you up for good. Shut you. No. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know what that is, don't you, boy? That's your goddamn fail safe. You show them your sa and your savage. True color, boy. And it's got them scared. Why now? Why? Because you're not one of them. You're one of us. I saw your plans, I, so plans and their plans for you, Tin Man. Curly's always intend to reprogram you once you finish me. And now that you served your purpose, she's shutting you down. What's it like? Feeling that kill virus spread out over your system? Shutting you down one bionic cell at a time? I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you. I'm glad they weren't advanced enough to install one of those in me. You may have beaten me, boy, but I did you one better. I made you beat yourself. And as a parting gift, I'll give you one last lesson in pain. Complete term and system termination in 30 seconds. What are you doing? What? And he pat uh, he ripped his own arm off and transferred the shutdown virus to Hall. No. Steve, hold on. <sighs> now you're harmless. And now you're harmless. <laughs> how how did he overcome the shutdown? You shut down the machine, Margaret, not the man. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to. I'm happy. <laughs> Jamie, oh God, Steve! Turn Austin here to see you, sir. We can rebuild him. We can make him bigger, fast, and better, stronger. Let's work on going more than a few weeks between rebuilds. New office, huh? At the new OSI, Steve. After Margaret's dismissal, everything here has changed. Even the cafeteria food is better. How could it get worse? You look great. I came by the hospital a few times to check on you, but you were still out. How do you feel? Great. Better than last time. Hopefully better than the next time. Isn't that right? Like I said, Steve, it's a new OSI. You're no longer obligated to work for us. 
There are no fail-safes built into you anymore, figuratively or literally. It's your life now, completely. And I won't lie to you. I hope you come back to work with us. With me. I don't know. The Benetons aren't all that hot. Do you know what my insurance deductible looks like? <laughs> I hope you do come back one day, Steve. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, well, uh, we'll see. I want to get out of this city for a while. See the country. My home. If you don't send me at least one postcard, you're, you're, we're quits, Austin. That, and that much I promise you. I owe you that and more. I'll be in touch. Wow. <laughs> hey, metal man. Interested in a lube job? Wait, wait right there. Let me look at you. Very, very nice. Let me ask you something. Did they replace everything? They replaced everything that was sufficient. My point exactly. So did they replace everything? What the hell are you insinuating? Nothing, nothing. It's just that it's just that in a world where they can make you better, stronger, and faster. Well, did they mention anything about endurance? <laughs> no, but they did mention that they could do a few things for you. You know, just a nip and tuck or and here or there. Oh, really? Well, we're not talking anything big here. Just a couple of pounds. Couple of pounds? Man, you're such robots. Tell the robot you love him. Oh, God help me. Tell him I love the robot. Does not compute. Don't press your luck, Austin. <laughs> so, how was that? I loved that. I really did, too. I thought that was great. Was <laughs> man. Seriously, it's like, it's so good. It's, it's one of Kevin Smith's best. You wouldn't tell that was Kevin, did, could you? I know, right, though? It's like the story was actually really cohesive and really good. Like, mm-hmm. it kept you entertained. It kept you hooked in. Yeah, like exactly. I love the artwork and when it kind of shifted those couple of times. It's like exactly even just the the brighter colors got different and brighter and more vibrant and like it went from like the blue electricity to the green electricity and just exactly even more neon and oh well, yeah, well, yeah, the artwork yes, but well, I'm talking about the story. The story was amazing. Yeah, I loved yeah. the story like, a lot. Being able to uh, basically follow how he would feel in that situation, not just like the action side of it. Yeah, and it wasn't that cliched, right? It was cliched, but it was done well. Right. Yeah, exactly. Now, granted, it's okay. There is one thing that's very Kevin Smith. It's wordy as all hell. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Now, Kevin likes the right dialogue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but like I, said, I did like it how even the stuff that was dirty was more, it was human. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like over the top or too blue, if you will. Like exactly, it not like some of his other, not like some of his movies. Yeah, for being a Bionic Man comic book, it was all very human. <laughs> exactly. Although I gotta say, Margaret was a total bitch. <laughs> yeah. Which <laughs> I understand her at first, but as it went on, it's like no. You're right. <laughs> once, you, once you arrested Jamie, then you're like. Fuck you. All right. Exactly. Now you went too far. Right. You exactly. But yeah, though. So that was the by and, Kev- and Kevin Smith's The Bionic Man. I actually think it was better than his Green Hornet script. We'll have to compare. We'll have <laughs> to you guys can check Green it out. It's an older Hornet episode. Too. It's an older episode. Check it out. All right. Yes. I will definitely do that. But yeah, thank you both for joining me. Thank everyone for watching. And well, actually, no, I just realized one thing. We didn't, yeah, going back to the artwork. Very good artwork. Yes. yes. Like being able to shift the styles and shift like the the tone of the vibrancy yeah. of it too. Like it was just that shift over to where like that bright green and neons were everywhere. Like yeah, exactly. really got my attention. Yeah, that was one of my favorite, uh, favorite artworks i'd put some of those up on my wall like i know i say that a lot but i really i love that right well he got a lot of depth with his art too oh and yes and then the colors just made it even better and, yeah exactly just want to get that out of the way because i cut you off when you were talking about it but oh, yeah though this it. was this was just so good and i'll we'll see you all on the next one take hey. care hey thanks for having us yeah